Hello and welcome back to another video, another match review, another really depressing match <laughs> review. Before we get into it though, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment with your thoughts, and here we go. Here we are again. Another defeat for Leeds, this time at the hands of Liverpool. It was always going to be a tough game, um, but... We made it a lot tougher than it had to be, I think. Defensively, we were way too open. They cut us open so easily and there was there was just a sheer gulf in class and ability and quality. Um, and that, that game just showed that. Um, we've still got a very long way to go to get back up to the top where we where we should be as a club. Before we get on to the obvious topic of the game, we'll talk about a few of the players. Um, we found out that Adam Forshaw has had another injury setback. And it's, it's getting to the point where we have to think, is it worth it? He's been gone for two years. He had a good run in the under-23s, played a decent amount of minutes in the cup, has been on the bench. We thought he was just going to start getting back into it, but now... He's had another setback. How long do we leave it before we have to make the tough decision of releasing him? Because he is... Oh, I would love to see him back in the team. He is a decent player when he has played under Bielsa, but it's just a lot of money to be wasting. Rajazani tweeted on deadline day that he is our new midfielder that we've been looking for but is he <laughs> he just isn't going to be is he if he keeps getting injured and it is tough to say it but i think i think in january we might have to let him go if he's not back playing games because we can't just keep waiting for him. Football's a tough game. You have to make tough decisions. And one of those tough decisions is if he's not playing and if he does keep getting injured, we do, we will have to let him go. And I think January would be that point if he hasn't played. So we can free up some wages and get a centre midfielder that is going to play the games. Speaking of injuries, Diego Llorente had another little injury in that game which is tough to see because he is arguably our best centre-back. He has since said that it's not too bad and he's hopefully going to be back soon. So hopefully it'll only be a week or so. Rafinha, this season he just hasn't seemed the same player, has he? He's, he seemed very disinterested and he had he did have another poor game. He's had a few poor games since the start of this season. Is there something going on in the background? Is it the whole Brazil thing that's got into his head and has not been the same player? Has there been a transfer offer that's been rejected that he wanted to take? He just hasn't lit up the pitch as well or as much as he did last season. Which is bad because he is one of our most important players in the team. It's very much like Phillips. When Rafinha plays well, we play well. Rafinha hasn't played well at all this season. And we haven't got a win yet. So those two do kind of link up. I'm talking about Phillips, he he played really well. He played really well against Liverpool. He was he tried all he could, but he was very isolated and Liverpool did that really well. That Jurgen Klopp said that that was one of their main game plans to stop Phillips from playing. And they did. And we didn't really... Didn't take our chances when we had them. Rodrigo had that great chance at the edge of the box that he just put straight in front of Alisson. He needed to put that in one of the corners and that would have been a goal, a different game then. But yet again... Just not good enough from Rodrigo, which is really worrying. He got subbed off at half-time yet again. Tyler Roberts came on and looked a lot better than Rodrigo. 
so what can you do when when your record signing is playing shit there's no other way to put it and then you have this youngster come on and shows him up like yes he's not playing in his natural position but Tyler Roberts when we signed him was a striker and he does decently in the attacking midfielder role just behind Bamford but I think I think that is the end of the Rodrigo experiment now I said that in the last video but this has to if Rodrigo plays in that position against Newcastle so many people are going to be angry I did, however, see on Twitter, uh, someone tweeted that Bielsa's confidence in Rodrigo reminds them of when most fans were questioning him picking Bamford every week, despite him not performing very well. And that loyalty ultimately did pay off in the long term. So is it going to be the same with Rodrigo? Are we just going to have to keep pressing through him not performing well in that position? and eventually he'll get there. Maybe. Maybe that's maybe that's what's going to happen. But with Bamford, that was in the Championship, so it was slightly different. In the Premier League, you don't have time to wait. You have to get results. Otherwise, you are going to start to struggle. The positive thing is that if Rodrigo does carry on playing in that position... We do have an easier run of games now. So will the easier opponent make it easier for Rodrigo to play better? Will he almost be playing as a second striker? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I just really hope he does kick on. Because it's a lot of money to just flop like that. Well... In the grand scheme of things, no, it's not a lot of money. But for Leeds, it's a lot of money to waste on someone that isn't performing at all. He is consistently not performing. We'll have to see how Bielsa goes against Newcastle on Friday. Uh, Liam Cooper, again, not the best. Do we think that he has found his limit? Because again, this season, he's not. I can say it about all of the players, really. It's easy to pick on individuals, but the whole team really hasn't been up to it yet this season. They don't seem like the same squad that were playing last season, that were up for every game, that were getting results that they shouldn't have got. But it's easy to pick on the players when the results aren't going our way. I'm sure if we did get a draw in that game, I'd be praising the players. But... I don't think when all of our centre-backs are fit and unsuspended, I don't think Cooper plays. I was, I questioned why he was in the team originally and Stroik was dropped to the bench. But I feel like maybe Bielsa just wanted that bit of experience at the centre-back instead of youth. Junior Firpo grew into the game, I think. As the game went on, he started to get better. It was always going to be tough for him playing against Mo Salah. Um, Mo Salah is just a quality player. And for someone that hasn't played pretty much in a year and a bit, two years at Barcelona, he is still finding his feet playing regular football. He, so he's going to need time to get that match fitness, to get that sharpness back. But he did a decent job against a really quality player. Now here's the moment everyone's been waiting for, that tackle. Um, it just wasn't a red card, was it? It just really wasn't. But I'm sorry for Harvey Elliott. I hope he comes back soon because you hate to see something like that happen to any player. And especially when it's a young player that looks that looks like he's going to have a great career. He does seem like a quality player. So I hope he does come back soon and make a full recovery from that. And I don't want to make it out like strikes the victim here. Because realistically, he's just got a three-match ban. Harvey Elliott's got 
months out with a broken ankle. But it just wasn't a red. There was no malicious intent to that challenge. He won the ball. He only had eyes on the ball. And the ref played on. Harvey himself has since said on Instagram, it wasn't Stroik's fault and it wasn't a red card. It was just one of those freak accidents that happen in football. The game only stopped because the physios ran onto the pitch. And Jurgen Klopp as well, he, he really pissed me off. Running onto the pitch and getting in the referee's ear like he always does. He shouldn't, he shouldn't have been on the pitch. Okay, I understand if you wanted to check Harvey Elliott to make sure he was alright, but getting in the referee's ear isn't something that you're allowed to do. Like, he was just trying to influence him. Realistically, Stroik got sent off because of the injury and not because of the tackle, which is wrong. It just is wrong. I hope we appeal it. But from what Bielsa has said, I don't think we will because he never comments on ref's decisions. He always says that what the referee has done is right. They are the ref. They are in charge. But I think we should appeal it. And if we did appeal it, I think we would have a big chance of getting it overturned. And with Urente being out for however long he's out for, I think we need Stroik available. Because otherwise, what do we have? Cox still out, Urente's out, then we have Cooper, Charlie Creswell, and potentially Luke Ayling can play at centre-back. If Stroik did get it overturned, I think I would play Ayling and Stroik together at centre-back. As I said, I don't think Cooper's up to it at the moment. Yes, he is the club captain, but the club captain doesn't need to play every game. We could easily put Phillips as captain, we could put Ailing as captain, Stuart Dallas as captain even. It was frustrating. It... I thought they would have been up for it more. And that red card did change the game. If Urente didn't get injured, the game potentially would have been different. Well, the game would have been different because Stroik wouldn't have been on the pitch. So it's just a, it's a tough one to take. This just means now that Newcastle on Friday is a must-win game. Do we start to worry? If we don't get anything from Newcastle, yes, <laughs> I think we do. Because we should be beating Newcastle, but we should have... We should be beating Burnley and we only got a point there. Newcastle are on a bad run of form themselves. We'll see where we are after that game, I think. Who do we play in centre mid against Newcastle? I th I think he'll be playing Rodrigo again. He'll be showing faith in him. He believes in him. I would love to see Shackleton get a go in centre mid, even over Rodrigo. Or even just play at right back if Ailing moves to centre back. But we don't have too long to wait for that game. It's on Friday night. So I'll be back with another match review then. Remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and I will see you on Friday.